Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter a new project together every week. And we are in our fourth actually project of our February box. So this theme we were doing love notes and we're going to continue that theme and I'm going to show you different ways to draw some celebration cards. So you can make, we're going to make some happy birthday cards, you can use it if you have a baby shower coming up. Just different ways to basically use the circle of the shape of a balloon. Yes. What? Yeah? What? One, two, three, four. <laughs> if it's not four, I'm pretty sure it's four. I'm going to go with four. I'm going to trust my gut because he tries to rail, derail me sometimes. <laughs> I never do that. <laughs> Whatever number this is, actually, if you're watching this and this is one for you, still do this. You don't have to go back and watch one, two, three, four. You could do this at any time. Maybe that was his secret way of getting me to tell you guys that. <laughs> I was just trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so <laughs> these steps that we're going to do, there's only three steps for this project. So I'm going to show you how we're going to create a pencil layout first. So there's a practice worksheet that we're going to go through. So we're going to do a pencil layout first. The second step is I'm going to show you how to do the lettering of it. First in pencil, then going over it with the pens. And then the third step is I'm going to show you how to do the watercolor part of it, because this is watercolor. So, I just realized that that happy birthday one is in the shape of, of a, balloon? a balloon. Yes, that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. It's an illusion. That oh, is I love so that you just cool. noticed that. <laughs> okay, supplies. So, the different pens are the first one is a Le Pen Flex, which is a brush pen, so it can create thin and thick lines. That's the navy. You also have a burgundy color. And if you don't have our box and you don't have these pens, you can also get them at our website if you'd like to do that. And then this is the same brand of Le Pen, but it's their regular tip. So that's the regular tip and that is the brush tip as it's moving. So there's two different ones that you can use. And then the last pen is a fun jelly roll. So it's a copper jelly roll that has a little bit of shimmer. And then for the paint, you can use any mix of colors, but the three that you have is tangerine, fuchsia, and space blue. Okay. So to start off, let's see. I think what I'm going to do I'm just going to talk you through this on here, but then I'm actually going to do it on a physical card. Fake out. I did this last time. You will need some cards to draw on something. If you don't have the cards that came in your, <laughs> your box, this is the packet that I'm specifically using. It comes with watercolor. These cards are actually watercolor paper. If you don't have that, grab, if you have the Canson watercolor pad paper that Sarah loves to use, Cut that, fold, got a card. So you don't need to have the specific tools that I'm using. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And if you don't even want to make a card, you can just make it into a big poster or something. You can take the lessons that we're doing here and apply it to anything. Okay, so if you'd like to do this step first, you can do it first on this practice worksheet. And if you don't have this, you can download it on our website for free at letsmakeart.com. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sketch out a oval. I understand, now that I'm thinking about it, if ovals are not to your thing or circles. I'm sure that's going to happen to some people. Yeah, it's fine. If it's not, grab something that's circular. I'll do it on another one. What if you did a popped balloon? A what? Like an exploding balloon. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I, <laughs> yes, you totally can do that. Uh, <laughs> so I was gonna say is that you can also. It doesn't need to be. Um, some balloons are circular, not oval. You can draw it like that, or if you do want to take this, can can they see those lines? Okay. So if you um, want to make it more oval, though, I suggest to start with a circular shape. Grab a cup, and then what you do is you kind of make a 
a cone? I get, not a cone. Fifth. Give it a hairline. Actually, line. oh, I was gonna say it looks like a swim cap. Oh yeah, Spe a speedo hair cap. A spe That's the brand. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, that is a brand. I have that that swim cap. Uh, so you are just gonna kind of add. So there's less space here than more. Then there's less here and more space here, so that's what creates that more oval shape. And then you can erase this, and you can leave it maybe a balloon because balloon. Well, balloons are. I always wonder when I draw them if it's more, if it's smaller on the bottom than the top. So, I, kind of, it's gonna blow in the wind. Doesn't need to be exact. Yeah. But if you want to do the same thing on the bottom, you can also do that. Maybe it's just not as deep. There you go. That's how you can draw your own circle. So the reason why I'm actually doing this directly on my card is like I said, I'm just doing this one for time purposes to show you guys. But I was gonna say, if you are like me and you actually like to use a light box, I usually do that and I'll make this my complete template. And then what I'll do is I'll use a light box and place my card over it and then go and use the marker. But the positive thing about this is we're using markers, so we're gonna actually trace over our pencil line, so it doesn't matter. For this one, we're actually gonna erase it. But on a lot of them, it's okay, whereas when, if you're using watercolors, you might kinda see it. That was a very long explanation that I didn't need to do, so I apologize. <laughs> I'm gonna keep moving on. <laughs> okay, so for this specific one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first one and I'm going to show the one that Keenan realized is the shape of a balloon, but we actually don't see the outline of it. So start with your pencil line, and this is why we're going to do it in pencil, is I'm going to erase it, is I'm going to help myself and draw myself some guidelines where I'm going to draw my letters. So happy birthday, and I'm going to fit it here. So what I'm doing is I'm not actually doing my script lettering, I'm just doing my block lettering. And I'm going to fill in the space. So I'm going to extend all the way to the top as well as on the sides by the time I get there. And it's okay if there's more empty space. You can kind of see that here. Your eye will subconsciously fill that. Or if you get too far over, you can also, if you want to draw a heart there, if you want to fill in that space and that bothers you, you can draw something fun right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm, I'm drawing my straight, my downstroke is the outline of the balloon. So that's how your eye's going to see that. When I, I already, st I'll draw one more letter. I'm drawing it about the same shape as I did here, just subconsciously and naturally. However, I f I'm anticipating and realizing that by the time I do the whole word, I'm probably going to run out of space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish my letters and I'm going to redraw them. This is why eraser is great. I'm just going to draw them skinnier. So I'm still drawing them just as tall, but just squishing them so that I can fit my entire word. And I realized on this one, can you guys see how this Y is different than this Y? One's technically a lowercase, one's an uppercase. Doesn't matter. We're not in school here trying to make things perfect, but I did that. That kind of looks funky to me. I'm going to move this over a little bit. The reason why I did that, I think, was so that it had my eye can follow that shape here, the edge of the balloon. So I'm just going to curve it a little bit. It might not be as perfect, but that'll help it a little bit at least. Okay, then what did I do here? I just, I guess I decided to mix it up and I did two smaller, and I kind of encompassed it. Maybe I wanted, I think I wanted you to be more emphasized. And then for the Y, since I'm gonna have some space down below, I decided to curve it so that it fills in that space. Maybe this comes up to fill. That's interesting. Nope. I thought the Y for the U was part of the balloon until you oh, mentioned the curve. Yeah, actually I can see that. Yeah. Kind of the, the, the string part of the balloon. Yeah. That totally works too. 
Um, but what I was going to say was that, oh, so can you guys see how I, my brain went, okay, Nicole, I'm going to listen to what you said earlier, and I'm going to extend the end of my U, or yes, the end of my U. It's funny. I trip myself up because it's a U, but I'm writing U. Anyways, uh, <laughs> is I'm drawing the end of my U, and it, I tried to extend it just to see what that works. However, you have to be careful on some things because what letter does that look like, Keenan? W. Yes. I know my letters. I didn't say it like you weren't, didn't know. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> um, is it, don't make it so high so that it still looks like a U. Because that's the tricky thing about cursive is sometimes letters look like different ones. Um, and that's a way that you can prevent that from happening. Okay. So, I'm going to draw my... The bottom of the balloon? I wonder what that's called. The stem. Should I Google balloon anatomy? Yeah, let's learn while we're doing this. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I guess that would make sense. Okay. Oh, last thing. So I did my lettering like that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the thick parts of this. So this is mimicking phallography, which is essentially creating the thin and thick lines of letters after so but I left them open instead of calling them in so I'm gonna do it in pencil you might not be able to see it because it's a little small but I'm just gonna draw on the thick down parts so thick on the down here so I'm just drawing a, a line so that I'm gonna color that in afterwards and then if you realize so if you guys can see my it got a little close between my eye and my R that's okay oh I need to sharpen my pencil move it over a little bit. Oddly enough, a balloon has five parts. Oh, tell us. Drip point is on the very top, the rounded part. This is a drip point? Uh -huh. Odd. Then the body, which okay. is where you're riding the head of bird face. Then the body neck transition. Then is... the neck. Then the lip or B. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's the neck? The neck is, is the neck this part or this part? Oh, this the is the body. neck. Yeah. What we tie off is the, is the neck. Okay, that makes sense. And this is the... I, I realized I was talking really quietly. My mic was not working. Oh. Say it again. Okay, I'll point to the part and you can educate us. Okay, top, drip point. Happy birthday phrase area, body. After the body is the neck, the body neck transition, then the neck... Oh. Then the lip or bead. 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 Like you wear bead, you string yes, beads. Yes, I think it has something to do with how they're made. Whoa. Cool. The bead or the lip. The lip makes sense. The neck and the lip makes sense. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I finished that. So that's that pencil one. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this one as well. So instead of... Filling out, so if you guys can see here, for this one, your eye can't see the shape, or the, we actually don't see the physical line. This one, we can, but we're gonna create it with the watercolors in the next step. I just wanna go through the lettering for you. But you'll notice is that I call it breathing room, so I left breathing room around this, so it's like the letters are on the balloon, rather than the letters are the balloon. That makes, that makes sense. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my lettering just inside and leave a little bit of breathing room. So it doesn't need to be exactly, but that will help you instead of coming right at the edge and starting to write it's a, start a little bit over. It's not exactly in the center because if you think about it, if I start in the center, I'm going to go all the way to the edge. So come a little bit, how about a cup, a little bit over to the left and then start there. So this one I'm going to do in more of a script. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to write, it's a boy. Since I wrote, it's a girl, and you guys can see that. Sarah's having a boy. That's what I was just going to say. This is perfect. <laughs> Sarah and Michael. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, when it comes to when you're creating and designing your own card, like I said, this is your card. You can decide. 
Do you want to make the B capital or lowercase? What I'm thinking is that if I were to make it lowercase, that would totally work. Let's see if what it would look like if I make it uppercase. Either works. But what I'm thinking is that, let me move this over a little bit more. So on this one, I filled the negative space with the end of my G, because if I were to draw a girl like that, you would notice that there's some space right there. So we also kind of have that here, but then I also see this space here. So what I'm thinking is I might curve it and have it fill there. Mm, not really feeling that. That was an idea. I executed it. I didn't really feel strongly about it. So I think I'm going to just curve it right there. So that's how you kind of experiment is see and assess where you can fill it in and then go from there. Okay, so can, oh, sorry, I forgot to draw it darker for you guys. Yes, oh, dang it, sorry. Okay. Okay, so when you're looking at this, I have some breathing room around the whole thing. It's okay, so when you're looking at this, if you think, Nicole, there's more breathing room at the top, it doesn't bother me. If you wanna fix that, you can, and you can just make this a little bit shorter if you'd like. The beauty of drawing in pencil first. Okay, I'm not gonna draw the lip of it yet because we're gonna go over it in watercolor. Okay, now we're going to use our pens. So we have these two cards. I'll just go continue with this one. It's perfect because we have the navy. So here's what I'm thinking, guys. We, I, both of these examples, I'm not using the brush pen in a way of learning the thin and thick lines. So I think I'm gonna mix it up and explain to you that on this one, what I did was I created this, and I'll just walk you through it, is I used the jelly roll. So I used the jelly roll and I left open just like we did here, the space. So we're gonna, I'll show you how you can fill that in after because we're gonna do it here. Do you think that's okay? Is that more confusing? Or do you think people would want to see how I did this? Can Try. you finish one card? Yeah, I was just thinking, so, okay. Try not to give too much information at once. You know what? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a mix. I'm gonna write it's A and show you this technique. And then I'm gonna do boy with the brush pen technique. Nice. Combo, okay. So, to do this is I have my script lettering. What I'm gonna do is, you could do it in pencil first, or if you'd like, I'm just gonna trace over this. And I'm realizing if your pencil lines are too dark, I did that because I wanted you guys to see it. But a technique that you can do is if you want your pencil lines so that you are still have a guideline to trace, just lightly erase it so you can still see it. So what I'm doing is I'm not pressing hard with my eraser. I'm just kind of grazing over it lightly. So then I can still see it's kind of there. You might not be able to see it, but it's still slightly there to use as my guideline, but it's just not as dark. So draw it like that first. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to add the open parts, which is the thick parts of this letter. And you're gonna keep it a similar distance or width from the original line. So here, this is the thick part, so I'm gonna draw that. And then thin on the up, so I'm gonna leave that. And then this is the thick down. A trick also, or it's not a trick, a technique I wanna show you, when it comes to curves, because those are two curves, what may help you as you're doing this is if you have the A, or a circle or the A, for example, is I'm drawing, think of it as a half moon. So I'm going from skinny to wider to skinnier. So even though I did say, I just said a minute ago that you wanna keep this the same width the entire way, the eye needs help because if I were to do that, and that even gets skinnier right there, I can't even subconscious, or can't do it on purpose. 
it would just be thick the entire way. And it's what you're mimicking in this situation is you're mimicking this brush pen where it goes thin, thick, and thin. Can you see that? Yep. So it has, di so it has different parts of it. So that's why, in addition, another th common thing that you might do, which is okay, but if you want to create the same look, is you might just think, okay, I'm just going to draw a straight line. So that doesn't really help either. So if you think of it as more of a crescent moon shape and kind of glides into it, that will help you to do that. So, okay, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that open. So now I'm going to show you how to do the brush pen, and I'm going to draw boy. If you want to, whether you're writing boy or happy, I created these practice worksheets that you can do, and so it breaks up the words. I did happy, and there's one for birthday. Is this an okay spot? It's good on the top. Okay. So when you're doing this, I realize I'm not drawing happy in script, but I just want to show this, that you can use this on your own. And what you're going to do is you can trace over these shapes, and you're going to go thin, and then when you're going down, you're going to make a thicker stroke. And to do that is I'm just pressing harder. So let me do it here again. So thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. So this is how when you're using a brush pen, these are two worksheets that you can use for that. So I'm going to do that with, use the same brush pen and use the same technique like I was saying, but do it for my card. So I'm going to go, th so my hand would be moving in the downwards direction or towards me. So I'm going to go thick on the down. So I'm going to push and put more pressure on this pen. And then here's thin on the up. So I'm going to use the tip and I'm only applying a light amount of pressure. Thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. If you need to stop there, that's totally okay. You can continue it afterwards. So I suggest for you when you're doing this, even with boy, and it's such a small word, I would go slow. So I'm going to take it stroke by stroke. So I'm going thick on the down, thin on the up. Thick, put heavier pressure, come around. And I made that thin. It's okay if it still is thick all the way, but I just released and had a little bit less pressure. So that's how you can create that thin and thick line. Okay, that is how you do that one. Now, the beauty of these brush pens, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to create this one for you guys. Let that dry. Is my guideline good? Good. Okay. Is, oh, this is the wrong one. Actually, this is a great way to show you guys. Where is it? So if you walk into a store and you're like, I want a Le Pen, Nicole said we should get them. This is the same, can they see that? Yes. Looks exact same. The difference is that there's an added flex, which means it's this brush pen, whereas there is no flex here, so this is a regular tip. You can use both of them. And the Le Pen will be great to do is the same as a jelly roll where it's not flexible. But right now I'm using the flex one, so it is the brush pen flexible one. But I want to show is that you can dictate the, the, the thickness of your letters with this. And so even if I'm not doing a script style, I'm just doing my block lettering for this one, I can decide. Uh, I'm going to use my technique, and this is really, let me erase a little bit. Business. I know it's kind of gets it's smearing a little bit but it's okay because after at the end I'm gonna erase a little bit more so this is gonna look real messy to you guys <laughs> but the reason why is so when I made my first line I can see pencil lines underneath which is okay I just if I can prevent it a little bit I might as well help myself okay what I was saying is that I can figure out, and this is a great lesson for figuring out how much pressure you're applying. So I'm going to be conscious and I'm going to try and apply really thin pressure just to see what that looks like. Versus on these lines I press a little bit harder. This is just an exercise just to show you guys. So you can do it either way, but I'm going to consciously think, okay, I want a thin line. And then let's see if I can make a little bit thicker line. Cap that off. 
So this can create variance even just within your block lettering. And I will say, if you forget and you're not thinking about your thin and thick lines in this moment, that's why I love this style and why this works is that it really doesn't matter. Just wanna show you that you have the ability to create that if you want. So um, it helps, like I said, to trace in this moment and I will erase it at the very end. So you can use this technique for anything. If you're writing a card for a different celebration, maybe it says congrats. I need to not talk while I'm doing this. <laughs> I, that was confusing. For whatever reason, I always want to make like a really fancy card that's teasing a sibling. I don't and, know why. Because that's how your family is. Yeah, that's how we are. <laughs> what for would some you reason. write? I don't know. I don't what know. card did you write to brother three? Four. Four. Brother Dang four. It. It's all good. Uh, I can't. I, I don't want to say. Oh. <laughs> it was a teasing card? Yeah, well. Okay. Okay, sorry. It was, just a shub, it was a subject it was related to. I sent him six different three by five cards. Wow. Did you draw on them? No. Just notes. Oh, okay. Um, really quickly, I want to say this is on this part, I left a little bit of space and then I'm going to add my thick down part and then connect that. And the reason why is that's just a style preference instead of having my line go over it um, and cross through. I just wanted to leave it open. So that's why I did that. So I think by the end, I wasn't really thinking about the thin and thick. I just was going for it. And like I said, that totally works. Okay. Oh, and then the lip. And the string. I did that with my regular lip pen in just the dark gray. Ooh, I'm going to leave a little bit of a line because I'm going to add a border in watercolor. Okay, I'm going to now erase. So on both of these, you can see my pencil lines now, so I'm going to erase a little bit. And the cool thing that we learned about these pens, which I knew, I just didn't know how great it actually was, is they don't smear. That's so why I wanted to use these pens for your cards, because you might have smearing because it's smaller. Let's see. This yeah. is going to be interesting. Because it was one of the projects, Tell it dried you. really fast. Super fast. It was the envelopes, I think. So when you're using, I know jelly rolls, Sometimes smear a little bit more, yep. So if, I would just not press as hard when you're erasing. It's super minor. Just know that they're not as easy as the other pens. Okay, so this one I'm gonna erase too. So now I'm pressing harder than I was before and I can get rid of. And actually in this one, I can erase everything because this is what the final one looks like. And this is the illusion one that Keenan was talking about. Ooh, I pressed too hard. Maybe you don't press so hard. I went a little. Got a little excited. Got a little excited. <laughs> it's right there. It's okay. You know how I challenged that this was video number four? Yeah. You are corrected as video four, number four. What did you think it was? Five. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Wow, you just admitted I was correct? Uh, you know what another funny thing is? Being a painter, being an artist, being creative. You're gonna have color on your hands all the time. I see my fingerprints, it will feel more handmade. <laughs> you probably can't even see it, I can see it. Giving you a little, um, giving the recipient a little piece of you. Okay. Now, watercolor. So for both of them, I'm good. I'm gonna do my technique and just erase a slightly bit so that you can just see a little bit of my line. Okay, final step, watercolors. Let's do this first one because it's a little easier. 
So you have three colors, but you can also make way more, way, way more, many more different colors if you just mix them together. Is this all in the shot? My words are getting a little jumbled up this morning. It's my, okay. Sometimes we make up new words. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go for, I mixed my tangerine and my fuchsia, and I'm just going to pick up a little bit. I'm using around 10. For this one, actually, you can use a smaller brush. might be easier for you. But if you have this one in your box, this is the same one that I used, just don't press as hard. So all I'm going to use, I'm just going to use the tip of this brush, and I'm just going to glide. And I'm filling in my spot, my open spots. And what's cool is you'll notice is when I'm picking up, it ends up naturally having a little bit more color than it did here. And so it kind of bleeds into it. If you purposely want a little bit more color to mix it up, just drop that in at different points if you want it to have a little bit of variance to it. One thing I do want to say is that don't have so much water that it's really uh, soggy because then it'll bleed. So it might be hard to see, but these Le Pens looks like they can blend, which I'm going to test this out. Let's see. So what I'm thinking is I want to see if, if I just use water. Yeah. So it's actually... Uh, it will take a little bit of rubbing, but that's why I noticed on here is that it looks really cool. If you, I don't know if you can see zoomed in, but it kind of took a little bit of my P, my Le Pen that I drew, and it blended into it. So that's why I said if you have too much water, it'll kind of explode. So just be careful not to have so much dripping water when you're doing it. Let's make this, mix this up, and I'm gonna just do tangerine. And a trick to not having too much water is if when you're dipping in it and it has too much, you can either hit it off to the side or I also use the lip of this and get that off. There's the lips of a lot of things. There are. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the lip of a cup. It is. Okay. So this one's going to have a little bit of orange. So again, I'm just lightly grazing the paper. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> I'm lightly grazing it. I'm not pushing very hard. Let's see. Maybe I was pink for this one. Do a little bit of the lip. Oh, fun. Okay. Then for the border part. So when you're looking at this card, when I was designing this, I felt I want to jazz it up a little bit. So that's why I just decided to add a border around it. You can also fill it out if you want to fill the rest of it out with different shapes or not. But I felt like giving the shape of this balloon its own, own light and shine. So I wanted to make a border around it. So to do this, what I suggest to do is get a scratch piece of paper trying to think what the best angle is for you guys. What I'm going to do is, can you, can you still see the card versus the paper? Yes. Okay. So what I'm doing is, try not to get in your way. I am angling my brush a little bit more, so I want to use the belly, which is the belly is this part, or this, I guess this entire thing's the belly. This is the tip whenever you hear me say that, and this is more the belly. So I'm going to use more the belly, and I'm angling and I'm just going over the edge. So if you go a little bit on your paper, that's totally okay. That helps you. And I'm gonna do a little bit and then I'm gonna pick up another color and overlap a little bit and pick up another color. So now I'm picking up the tangerine. Maybe you wanna mix, in, mix them a little bit. Let's get this in the shot so you guys can see. So you're just transitioning. And if you wanna make that a smoother transition, what you could do is I just get it a little bit, a little not so damp, and then I'm just gonna move this over, just kind of swishing it into it so it bleeds into it. So I'm making it a similar width around the whole thing. And then, 
when you get to this part, I'm going to fold it back again. What? Did I move again? Sorry. No, you're good. I just was like, how are you going to do the inside of that creased paper? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a new challenge. <laughs> and then you just folded it backwards and I was blown away. <laughs> That's why you made that noise. I had no idea. <laughs> Who knew you could fold paper both directions? <laughs> okay, one more. I find that for me, it's easier for me to paint towards me when I'm drawing a straight line. You might be different than me, and Sarah likes to draw the lines diff this way. So, see what works for you. Either one, oh, got a little fun, fun fun there. Okay, so again, I'm just overlapping. And you'll notice, I, at least I believe so, I haven't dipped back in water, have I? I don't think I did. Well, it's kind of cool actually when it overlaps. I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, if you're new to watercolors and you find that it's, so I'm gonna explain this really quickly on my fun paper. So if you want a very concentrated color, you're just gonna use it straight out of the pan. If you want it to be lighter, you're gonna have a little bit of water on your brush. If you want it to be even lighter, have more water. So you can create various colors within that. Just wanted to show that really quickly. Okay, that one is done. It's cool because I looking at and comparing, I used more tangerine in this border. Uh, ooh, it's like sherbet color, rainbow sherbet. And the shape of this balloon is a little bit different, but I love it. Okay, final one. The final countdown. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, the same technique that I use in just filling the insides of these, the open space with watercolor, I'm going to do that same thing, but like I was showing, oh, I was about to do pink, which is fine, actually. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We're not, I guess, I, I kind of pink. am, unfortunately, color specifying to a gender, but yes. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. I'm gonna use blue to show you differently because this one I use pink and this one I'm gonna use blue. And I want it to be a little bit of a lighter blue, so I'm gonna do what I was showing, was I'm not using the blue straight out of here. I added a little bit of water to this. And if I were to use this entire thing, I think it would be too soggy. So you can also use the lip of this palette. I didn't mention. This palette you can get on our website. You, it, I like to have the, um, the color wheel or the, the wells in it so that I can mix different colors. Sarah loves to use a butcher palette, which is also really great. So whichever one you have works. I'm going to just really slightly color it in. I want it to be really light. It's the, can you even see that? Yes. Okay, cool. But, I mean, <laughs> it's very faint. It's very faint. And the reason why I'm hesitant is that this gel pen is copper, so it's a warmer tone. We can test. Whereas a cool tone is on the opposite side of the spectrum, so I just don't know if they'll clash. That works. That was where my hesitancy was, just so you guys know but that totally works. Okay, now we also are kind of creating an illusion because we're painting actually the outside or the inverse of the balloon and not actually the balloon itself. So I have my guideline here, it's my pencil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let's see. I can choose what I'm thinking in my head is if I want to make this blue a have a little bit of purple in it. Ooh, which Michael will love. Yeah, do a little bit of purple. Okay. So I'm gonna, so this is my fuchsia and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of it. So I'm mixing purple. So you can see how fast that was, is I'm using my space blue, a little bit of fuchsia. So I'm gonna make more of a bluish purple than more of a red purple. 
Ooh, yeah, it's gonna like that. So then, clean my brush. I'm gonna have a pretty concentrated amount of blue. So when you're doing this, gotta clear, clear the field. Is I'm gonna draw and I'm painting on the outside of my line. For me, it helps to spin. If that works for you, please try along as well. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to just do a section of it. And then I'm gonna go, there's different ways you could do it. I like to do a section of it. And then because I don't want this harsh line, I go and pick up a little bit of water and then I'm gonna blend that out. And then I'm gonna keep going. So you want to work, I don't wanna stress you out and say you have to work super fast. A suggestion though is to maybe work a little bit faster than you're used to or you're comfortable with so that you can blend out. But the great thing is this doesn't need to be perfect. And watercolors I love because they do its own thing anyways. So again, it's hopefully I'm in a good spot. Rotating around. So my left hand is helping me by rotating the paper. Ooh, so you guys can see that that got a little, the, what was it, the drip part, dribble? Drip. <laughs> I was about to say dribble. The drip part of that balloon got a little wonky. So it's okay. Drip point, that's what it was. Drip point. Let's fix that out a little bit, okay. Blend that out a little bit, so when I blend, I like to think of it as massaging the line to make it less obvious. Okay, so there's that. Now we can keep going. I'm gonna add a little bit of the purple in here. So you can dictate how concentrated of a color, like I said, depending on how much water you're using. Maybe I wanna have some blue in it. So it doesn't need to go directly from dark to light. Maybe you just have fun and mix it around and go like that. If you ever see a line that you want to not have be so harsh, get a little water, get a little bit off, and then just blend it back in. So I'm gonna come back around. So this kind of got a little dry, that's okay. Let me wake it up a little bit. And so again, like I said, I'm just massaging into that line so it's less of a harsh line that you can see. Maybe I'll have some darker blue up here. Just kind of swish it around. Then what I'm thinking is I want to show, we'll see how this works. I like how on this one, can you see how the, it's a lot darker here and then it does get lighter as it goes out. So if you did this already and you want to create a similar effect, what I'm thinking is, what I like to do is, I'm going to use straight my space blue. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Just get a little bit on the tip. So I'm just gonna use the tip of this and maybe I suggest doing this when it's dry, but I'm gonna show you when it's right now. Right now is I'm just gonna outline the edge. And do a part of it. So it's actually also creating more of a crisp line. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean my brush And I'm just going to touch the outside of that line. So I'm not, does that make sense? I'm not touching the actual line. I'm kind of touching the right side of it. So it just blends it from it. It'll help draw that paint out a little bit. Yes. So you can see even the difference between this side and this side. And I have a fun bloom right there that I actually really love. I'm going to keep going a little bit. So again, I'm using the straight blue, but I'm only using the tip of this brush. 
and then creating out from that. And then I'm going to clean my brush again, just touch it. So then this is actually also, I guess, a bloom too, but it's just going in one direction because I'm only touching it on that side. But it's blending into or drawing out like Keenan said. And then you can keep going further out. The one thing I suggest with watercolors if you're new to it is don't work it too much. So you can eventually kind of go into the paper if you work it too much. And again, blending that out. There we go. Nice. Okay. I am going to do this later. But when this is completely dry, you can add, I use the Le Pen and I drew the string part of it. I guess I didn't have a lip on this one. Nope, nope it's a lipless balloon. <laughs> maybe it's hidden, maybe it's flowing in the wind. Either way, you can either draw a lip if you want to. But I would wait till this is completely dry. Otherwise, you're going to also blend your pen into, which could be a look in itself. But I would do that. If you find that your cards are bending, what I suggest do, get a big stack of books, put it underneath there, and then just let it sit. I usually do it for overnight, and then I wake up, and then I'll send and write the card on the inside. These pens are also, the pens are also great, like I said, to write your note on the inside to your person. Before we head out, <laughs> we're gonna go somewhere. Before we head out, I want to show there's so many different ways to use just the balloon shape and create other cards. Um, if you have our box, it comes with a step-by-step -step sheet. And then on the back, I just gave a quick little instruction on how to do that. But for this one, I did the same shape of a balloon, but I mixed the colors a little bit more. So I mixed the space blue and the fuchsia, and then I added a little highlight, and then I did the lettering on top of this. I wish balloons actually looked like that, because that's amazing. Yeah had some variance to it. And then for this one, I just did different shapes in watercolor, but then I outlined it with the gold gel pen. So it kind of gave it a little bit of outline, but not too much since it was a similar color. And then this one, I did the lettering with the Le Pen and then did the dark lines after. So those are all different examples. You have so many things that you can create and ooh, I have something else that I wanted to share with you guys. I realize I don't have it. Maybe I'm not sharing it. I'm going to say it anyways. If you have our box, I didn't get a chance to tell you guys this in the beginning. You'll notice that there's a sticky pad. I wish I had it. There's a sticky pad that I, we, I created, and it has a thought bubble. Those are also just love notes that you can write to other people. You don't need to call them love notes, I guess. But my idea was to include that because sometimes we feel like you have to make a card and it's going to take a while, which you guys saw that took half an hour, 45 minutes. You can take time to do that for other people. But if you just have a sticky note, you also can use these pens, use it as practice, stick it on your coworker's computer screen and just remind them and inscribe a little note that says, hey, I'm thinking of you or good job today. Are you going to say something? Don't put it on the computer screen, please. Okay. The, oh, my gosh. The lip of the oh, computer screen. The lip of the... Nice. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to say that if you have our box, that was just a little fun thing that you might be wondering why it's in there. That's what that's for. If you don't have our box or wondering what I'm talking about, we have a monthly box that you can join along at any point. And we also have a Facebook group that is free that we'd love to have you join along. It's called Let's Make Art Lettering, so come join that. And then we have an Instagram called Let's Go Make Art. And we're just here together trying to spread the love of art and share it with other people. So hope you have a good rest of your week, and I'll see you guys next week for a new box. Bye.